Hi! Um, I never know how to start these videos, but here we are in my office. And um, it's the afternoon and it's very hot in London and it's very quiet around here. And I feel very inspired today to talk to you about something that nobody asked me. Um, I receive a lot of questions because I love... I ask you to ask me because I love knowing um, kind of what's on your mind and, you know, what troubles you're going through and how I can respond to that. It's a, it, you know, it's an interesting way to connect all these questions. And as I was reading them today, I thought about the one thing we always forget. Um, we always want to know how other people do things, what to do. There was a lot of questions, for example, about differences in couples, um, you know, I don't know, like age differences, money differences. Um, it could be, and, and there were a lot of, you know, how should we do? What's the best way to do this? How do I manage that? And I totally get it. I always have these questions like floating around me. How do I do this? How do I do that? But the truth is that the one most important thing that I've learned is that the answers are inside of me. And it sounds, you know, like a cliche, but it's so true. And I think it's one of the most important things that we can learn in life. It's a huge life skill. And I want to talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so how to answer all these questions by connecting to yourself. I think it's the best way to live your life because that's the only way that you're going to create something that's just yours. Um, if you're looking outside always for answers, there is no way you're going to create an original, personal, you know, made to measure life. And I realized that, you know, with everything that I've gone through and, and all that, this is kind of the number one value that's really important to me is, you know, are these decisions mine? I grew up um, with a, you know, a complicated family sometimes, you know, you know, I think I was raised to please. And so I, I, I became quite the people pleaser. And it was great in many ways because you're very charming you always want to you know please everyone and and bring joy and and listen and and and, and all these kind of things but the problem is like you don't have many boundaries you never know what's good for you you don't really know what you want you have problems with indecision not knowing you know do i say yes or do i say no and if you ask anyone that's worked with me emily can tell you for example indecision is one of has been throughout my life one of my biggest uh, problems and I've slowly learned how to fix that. Um, and I also learned on the way that there is not one answer to anything. Um, there are just personal answers. So for example, um, should you, is it good to be with a man older or is it better to be with a man younger? It depends on the man and it depends on you and it depends on so many factors and what you're looking for and there is not one answer. Um, the same with the, you know, money gaps or, you know, any other questions. It's so personal and there is only one way to know and it's to look inside and it's to create your own answers. Sometimes you're going to make mistakes, but it means that you need it to, to learn on your own. So how do you get to a point where you can confidently say no this is not for me i don't feel it or yes a hundred percent yes i want to do that even if it sounds crazy to the rest of the world i'm going to launch that company or i'm going to you know date this man or i'm going to you know take this big leap of faith um so how do you know these things I've talked about it a few times before, but the idea is to really connect with your intuition. Because deep down, 
it's the only thing that matter and you have it everybody has it uh, but we're really trained always to look outside for what's best for us right um, the best way to do that number one you have to know it doesn't come if you don't have the habit of connecting to yourself it will take a while so you have to kind of get ready to put in a little bit of work um, the number one thing to learn to connect with yourself is very simple and it's the most difficult thing and the most important thing. I talk a lot about it, but I don't know if I do it well. So let me try to explain. This thing is solitude. If there is always something in your mind, people talking around you, um, you know, a TV is on, um, you know, you're on the phone, you're on your, you know, all these things and you never have silence, you never have moments when you're bored, you never have, you know, just moments of loneliness, you're never going to be able to hear the movements inside of you. It's just impossible. And, but the first thing to know is, I remember when I was 22, had broken up with my boyfriend and left the city where I lived. I was just starting on a long life pattern, which, you know, those who know me know a little bit about. Um, and I arrived in a new city where I knew absolutely no one. And it was the first time in my life, because before that I always had had roommates and there was no solitude in my life. It was this kind of partying, you know, fun, like always doing something, you know, never alone type of person, which was fine, absolutely normal when you're 20, by the way. So don't berate yourself if you're there. And suddenly I was there in an apartment on my own and I had nothing to do. No internet at the time, you know, I had the TV and I just started crying and I cried so much for so long and the days kept coming at me and I, I really was so distressed by all this space and time that I had for myself and nobody calling me and, and nothing happening and I, I would have done anything to get out of it, to escape my solitude. And it's at the bottom of that, when I really like suffered so much, it was li like literally physical suffering, which makes me truly understand now when people, you know, can't leave a relationship or so, so, so scared of, of solitude. I so understand it. I have people around me who have that thing that I used to have and it's freaky. But the funny thing is that if you confront yourself to it, and I know a lot of you here, you know, know about it, then you find the treasures in it. And I remember very, like, you know, very specifically because at the bottom of this solitude, at the bottom of this suffering, this is the first time that I started painting. I had nothing to do. I was so bored and I was so lonely and so sad at everything. And I picked up some paper and I picked up whatever I had in the house in my small apartment in Marseille and I started doing collage and painting and doing things like that and for the first time I got in touch with my creativity and I mean you know I became an illustrator later it was so meaningful it was so important and I also slowly learned what to do with myself and this is this was the beginning of a great adventure when kind of a hero character of my life which is this gift of solitude and slowly I learned to tame it and to understand it and to feel when I need it. It took a long time because that was kind of the first contact. But then I had to go back to it, you know, many times in my life to really understand the joy of it. And now, 20, 30 years later or something, it's something that I really crave and look forward to because it's the moment when I can hear the movements of my heart my emotions popping up, things bubbling up. Um, and that's when I find a lot of answers to my difficult questions. So there is really that. Um, usually, because I'm still who I am, I'm still this kind of person that needs the exter exterior, you know, to answer a lot of my questions. What I'll do is when I'm in front of a big question, let's say, should I 
go for that job or not? You know, should I date that guy? Dating is complicated because there's a lot of trauma that comes up, but I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, I usually look at all the information, ask everyone their, their advice, you know, kind of do like so much research. And I don't think it's very healthy because usually I know the answer right away. But because I'm insecure in my decisions, even though I've learned the drill now and I know how to do it, I still do that just to make sure. So I go out and like for too many days, usually too much, I ask around until one day I just shut it off and I connect with myself. And the way I do that, I told you a few times before, but you know, everybody has their own way. The number one thing is solitude. The number two thing is to learn to listen to your body. And that is the most wonderful thing. Your body talks to you all the time. I mean, mine all the time, uh, but it has its own language, right? So I can't tell you, oh, when you have digestive problems, it's because this, I know there are some books that will tell you that, but I really feel again, like there is no one solution. There is no, you know, everybody is not the same. Um, so you have to learn your own body language. For me, I know when I have heightened anxiety, something's going wrong and I need to listen. Uh, my belly speaks a lot in terms of, you know, how tense I am. My period are a very important moment. If I know that I get really, you know, sad and like, tearful before my period, it means there is something that I need to explore or maybe I need a lot of rest. Um, you know, it depends what's going on in my life. Um, my skin speaks to my hair, you know, everything kind of is there to speak with me, but I have to be able to look at it and to slowly understand it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, you know, a life work, but that's what life is about, right? It's about discovering yourself. So learn your body responses to things and learn, you will learn as you do that, what is a yes and what is a no, and then you'll be just able to feel it. I know when the answer is yes <coughs> for any question, sorry, <coughs> I'll feel a huge sense of peace deep inside my belly. I learned a lot of this uh, through doing yoga. Sorry, I'm just going to drink a little bit. <coughs> I learned a lot of this through doing yoga because I think it's really a practice that teaches you to connect, you know, uh, with your body, uh, even stretching. You have a lot of answers. You're tight, you know, in your back for a lot of people, it's a stress response. So, you know, it will give you a lot of answers. So I know when it's a yes, because I feel peace, I feel calm and I feel this gentle excitement, but it doesn't feel frantic. Okay. That's just my personal thing. I know when it's a no, because it comes with so many questions. There is so many, you know, I want to do this, but this and that, and you know, it kind of, it doesn't feel clean. It doesn't feel clear. There's no clarity to be had. So I can feel it's bubbling all the time. Um, so that's how I kind of, you know, learned to work with my intuition for these kind of things. Um, okay. So two things, calm and solitude and learning your body language takes a while, but it's really worth it. Some people are connected to it right away. They will know like as children, they were never stopped from their emotions. They were never told, no, you're not cold. You know, some people do that. I have an ex I had an ex-boyfriend that used to do that. I was like, oh, I'm cold. He's like, no, you're not cold. And I was like, how can you negate what I'm feeling? That's what he, that, that, that was his way of doing things. And you realize that if you're listening to him, you just start questioning what your body's telling you and be like, am I not cold? Um, it can go pretty, pretty bad. I, I know that I was listening to these things and to what things he would tell me and I would start doubting my own feelings and emotions. So, it can take a while, but some people have that naturally, but others like me, it's a lot of work. Okay, so 
One thing that's really important before I start finishing this video is to learn to recognize something that we call trauma response or whatever. I'm not a therapist, so I don't like to use too much of this, but it explains really well what it is. And it's like, you know, in our lives, we've been conditioned to feel things and name them. And then it can induce us to make some errors. For example, if you've had a tricky parent that, you know, always made you feel insecure, unsafe, that you were doubting how much they cared, or, you know, maybe they didn't come on time and you felt always kind of on edge with them. This feeling of on edge is something that you'll associate with love. You know that because, you know, that's the first love you have is from your parents. That's how you model it. And somebody would make you feel like that or any other thing, you know, if it's uh, neediness or whatever, that's what you'll associate with love. If there is no peace in your family when you're young, um, that's what you think. Oh, that that is love. So when you meet a man that will make you i'm talking about about a man but it can also be a woman it can be other situations like you know in work uh, maybe you're in a an abusive relationship with one of your colleagues or your boss or whatever but that's what you always only saw as you know human relationships or in love you know the that kind of tightness in your body this excitement that's borderline you know kind of edgy and feels weird and, 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 you know, calls back to your trauma. And I think that's one of the things that we have to learn to recognize. And it's really difficult and it takes a lot of unraveling depending on kind of, you know, where you come from, your childhood, uh, the things you've been conditioned to, you've learned, um, also what society tells us because you know, I think the relationships today are really modeled on something quite crazy. Uh, when you look at the culture, at the dating culture, at um, uh, work culture and, and, and all these things in movies, you see this very dramatic relationship building. You see these very, you know, insane um movements of you know the doing things that feel crazy and that are described as being the exciting things and then we expect that in our own life so we carry all that and then when somebody makes us feel calm listened to cared for sometimes they'll will feel like oh i'm bored i'm not feeling anything this is not good this is not where i should go but it's just because you know we've learned to associate the other thing, the I'm not feeling listened to, I'm feeling edgy, I don't know if I he likes me, he hasn't called me back, that's what we have identified as love. So we have to be able to really look at these things and be like, oh no, no, this is not the right direction, this is the old direction, and kind of cut with that. It's a lot of work, but it's good to know it exists and that you can do it, because I've done it, right? Um, so through this little bit of work and, you know, we can go a little bit deeper. I'm not a spirituality teacher and a therapist and all that, but that's also why I can answer all these questions because I've done so much of this work myself and I've used so many different techniques and I still do today. And that's how I realized one day that all the books, everything that's on my way, all the teachers, all the how-tos, all the, you know, best practices and all that, they don't really matter. They're just here as like a little bit of guidance, but the true mastery of life, the true creative, you know, life to me is a beautiful painting. It's like something we create that just for ourselves. And that's kind of our work of creation, our work of art. And you can't do that in your own way, originally, you know, uh, made to measure if you don't question the narrative that you've grown up in and, and that you live in and that you just, you know, don't care for what other people think and just go ahead and create your own personal special life 
and maybe it means being with a guy 30 years younger than you maybe you know whatever it is that makes you happy and that makes you you know maybe quit the job where you make a million dollars a year and and start pottery or you know things like that that people will tell you you're crazy but you know inside of yourself that that's the true path for you um, and then that's how you create something that's very special and something that feels like it's yours so yeah i think maybe next time um sorry this was very inspired and personal and uh how can i say it's a part of me that i don't expose a lot this very uh, soft soft and you know part of myself but i don't know i was just inspired to do it today um very romantic side of myself too i think romantic in a nice way not like you know an epic beautiful way i think um but i think next time i should talk to you a little bit about how not to care so much of what people think so that you can really carve your own path and yeah that's going to be it for today all right bye guys